Hello everyone, the name is Eric Thorne. In today's video, we'll be exploring the benefits of being a sensing personnel type and why sensors are so intelligent and interesting, right? And okay, the more intelligent you are as a sensing personnel type, the more you're going to notice four key skills increase, right? So the four sensory intelligences. And the number one thing uh, that I see in sensors is their capacity for logistical thinking. And so something I see that intuitives often lack and something that I see sensors really excel at is their ability to think in terms of logistics. How much do I need of what and when and in what order, right? So a lot of the time intuitives don't know how to get started, don't ever estimate exactly how long something's gonna take or fail to account for different resources and things that are important to have and fail to organize their own work. But what sensors know is how to structure their own work and time and how to actually plan and make realistic plans that actually factor in time and uh, costs and things that are necessary for a trip or for going out or for doing something or for implementing a project, right? So that's logistical intelligence. But another skill I see in sensing types that I find extremely impressive is nature intelligence. And so that's the capacity to take in with the five senses different forms of sensory input and to be able to use it to make practical decisions in the moment, right? So a lot of the time, intuitives simply don't know how to respond to new things that are happening in their environment. And they fail to completely read and pay attention to what's happening in the environment. With nature intelligence, you have a higher degree of, and you familiarize yourself more easily with your surroundings. And with that, it's easier for you to get to know everyone in a room. It's easier for you to know what's happening and where and how and when things happen. And it's easier for you to think of a smart response in these situations, how to adapt if something goes wrong, how to adapt if a fire starts, how to move quickly and to respond in the situation by trusting your instincts and recognizing and listening to your instincts and being able to think of how to do and deal with and manage these situations, right? A third intelligence I see in sensing personnel types is bodily kinesthetic intelligence. And that's basically, it, it ranges from things to hand motor coordination. It uh, ranges from being able to know and understand your body and to avoid injuries and to know how to uh, heal or to uh, give yourself, uh, make yourself feel better or how to much you can move your body and what is dangerous and what's not and so on, right? And so by being more attuned to your body, basically everything in life gets easier. So when you have a higher level of bodily kinesthetic intelligence, it's simply easier for you to know how to move in a room, or how to move on the dance floor, or how to perform in athletic situations or how to manage physically demanding tasks and to know how much stress your body can take and not take, you know, and also to just be able to know when you're full or when you've eaten too much or you like to be able to just know and listen to and trust and feel in your body how your body responds to different forms of stimuli and situations, to know when you're overwhelmed, to know when you're tired, to know when you need to rest, to know when you want to move or go out and do something as well. And that brings us to number four visual spatial intelligence. So one thing I see with sensing intelligences is sensing types are really good at reading the room, at uh, understanding how to organize their environment to know what things should go where and what things uh, should look and will look the best. It comes deeper than that though. It's also attention to detail. It's being able to notice when something is off or when something's missing and where it is, right? So imagine you keep losing your keys, or imagine that you don't know where you put something. Often visual spatial intelligence allows you to remember and accurately remember objects and things that happen around you. So for example, if you struggle with object impermanence, like you don't remember what hobbies you have when people ask you, to, you don't remember what movies you like to watch when people ask you, visual spatial intelligence allows you to more easily remember objects and what they look like and how they should look too, because it allows you to compare visually what you see in front of you to what you have in your head. So imagine you have a blueprint of what the share should look like, and then you see a share and you're like, that's different, you know? So visual spatial intelligence can do these things. And beyond that, it can flip images in your head and it can rotate things and it can imagine things in different colors and it can organize and code and systematize information better. So what I've found is that sensing personnel types are a lot more intelligent than we tend to give them credit for. A lot of the time people tend to associate intuition with intelligence 
and tend to associate intuition with openness to experience, when in reality, sensing personal types have their own unique intelligence and their own unique skills. And we need to talk about that. We need to recognize the abilities that they have and how they can be put to use and how they can be useful for society. The truth is we would all benefit from improving our sensory intelligences and from learning to use our senses more effectively. And a person that can't use their senses effectively to navigate information and specific objects and situations and to learn from experience, to spot differences, this kind of a person will be impaired in implementing projects, in executing ideas, in organizing their thought process, and in learning from previous experiences. Having a higher level of skill in sensory tasks will also improve your level of skill in intuitive tasks, which means that a person that is better at organization, better at logistics, better at reading the room, better at the spotting uh, attention to detail, this kind of a person will have more effective ideas and will be able to more feasibly implement their ideas in the real world. The problem with sensing is if your level of sensing is asynchronously <laughs> developed relative to your intuition. And that means when your sensing skills are such high level compared to your intuitive skills, what's going to happen is it's going to be hard for you to entertain new ideas, to update your information and to keep on with new possibilities and new ideas. And so in general, it's better to strive for cognitive balance and learning to balance every practical task with creative new ideas and to learn how to move between hypothetical and speculative thinking to realistic and practical action in the moment. So let me just say, I am incredibly grateful to have sensory friends that can help me spot mistakes that I can miss if I rush too fast into a new task and to have sensory friends that can help me with tasks like organizing my room or environment or my workflow or sensory friends that can help me get myself moving on plans and ideas so that I don't stay indefinitely in a thinking uh, hypothetical space and sensory friends that can remind me of my body and my physical needs and how I'm feeling in the situation and whether I'm comfortable or not and whether I could change my posture or stand better or look differently at something. All these things are incredibly vital for my health and for my success and for the quality of my work and my ideas. So thank you so much sensors and keep being the smart and intelligent people that you are and Keep sharpening your sensory skills because that makes the world a much, much better place.